Welcome to yet another Foldit Lab Report. I am Bika here at the Institute for Protein Design in Seattle with my colleague Ian H. If this is your first time tuning in to a Foldit Lab Report, we release these videos on the first of every month to tell you more about the research that goes on behind Foldit. Last month, we announced a brand new AlphaFold prediction tool in Foldit, and we spent all of August running protein design puzzles with this tool. We have monomer design puzzles, symmetric design puzzles, protein binder design puzzles, and ligand binder design puzzles. So just to recap, AlphaFold is an algorithm designed by a company called DeepMind. And AlphaFold is exceptionally good at predicting the folded structure of natural protein sequences. Our own research has suggested that AlphaFold might also be useful for protein design, since it can detect sequences that are likely to encode a stable protein structure. The thing is, not all folded designs with high scores actually fold correctly when we test them in the lab. Sometimes even a great scoring folded design will fail to fold. But we crunched the numbers and we found that successful folded designs tend to be predicted by AlphaFold with a high confidence. We think we can use this confidence value to spot promising folded designs and improve our design success rate. Now, whenever you design a protein in Foldit, you can submit that design to AlphaFold for a prediction and see the prediction confidence. If the prediction confidence falls below about 80%, that's a sign that there's some room to improve and you should keep working on your design. We hope these predictions will give you some helpful feedback about how your designs are expected to fold. We rolled out the AlphaFold tool for several puzzles in August for all flavors of protein design. We saw binder design puzzles for the IL-2 receptor and for TGF-beta. We saw symmetric trimer design puzzles with hydrogen bond networks. And we saw ligand binder design puzzles for the cortisol ligand. But what I want to focus on in this video are the results from puzzle 2027, which ran for the whole month of August. It was dedicated to run-of-the-mill monomer protein design with AlphaFold predictions. In this puzzle, we challenge Foldit players to come up with the wildest folds you could think of and try to optimize the alpha fold confidence. I want to spend some time highlighting some of the most interesting solutions from two players in particular on this puzzle, Ikfil Dizanaman and SP Vincent. The first design comes from SP Vincent. It is a smaller protein with just a single beta sheet and two alpha helices that sit on top of it, but unlike most of the ferrodoxin or surfing hot dog folds that Foldit players might be used to, uh, these two helices are a little bit askew and not directly parallel with the strands of the beta sheet. In fact, it's, it's more like one helix that has a, a severe kink in the middle of it. Nonetheless, this protein still has a very solid core of orange residues in the center of the protein and lots of blue residues on the outside. And this should help it remain soluble and well-folded. Uh, we do see that there is a lot of exposed hydrophobic residues on this protein. In fact, this terminal beta strand here has these three tyrosine residues, which are completely exposed. I would be a little bit worried about that. This would be, um, this would be a concern. I might expect uh, the protein to aggregate here or maybe bind to some other things in the cell. It is important to remember that AlphaFold is making these predictions as if this protein is in isolation. So if the protein is going to interact with other things in the cell or other copies of itself, we cannot expect the AlphaFold prediction algorithm to necessarily pick that up. However, this is still a very cool design and you can almost imagine designing a binding pocket for a ligand right in the crook of these two helices against the sheet. So this would be a cool design uh, to build out maybe, and maybe you could, you could put another helix um, to kind of close up the, uh, the supposed binding pocket maybe, uh, where all of these secondary structure elements come together. In our second design of the month, we have another design from SP Vincent. This is a beta sandwich. So we have two beta sheets, one with five strands and one with just four strands, um, and they pack against one another face-to-face. -face. Um, traditionally, this has been a 
pretty difficult fold for us to design. And part of the reason for that is because proteins that have a high propensity for beta sheets tend to form amyloids very frequently. Uh, and amyloids are basically a very special type of protein aggregation where lots of copies of a protein form a long fibril of an off-target fold. It is a widespread phenomenon in, in proteins, and it's one of the reasons that we have such difficulty designing all beta proteins. AlphaFold uh, predicts this protein with a, a very high confidence, so um, this one might be worth testing in the lab. We see that it definitely has a very nice, well-packed core full of orange hydrophobic residues and, and some blue residues sprinkled on the outside. This beta sheet, the one, the five-strand uh, five beta sheet in particular, has a lot of twist to it. Um, this is not unusual. Beta strands actually are very stable twisted, and in many natural proteins, we see a, a twisted uh, beta sheet structure kind of like this. Um, so even though there are a lot of hydrophobic residues on the surface of the sheet, they actually, the curvature of this twisted beta sheet does make it so that they are a little bit more buried than they would be on a flat beta sheet. That said, that is a lot of hydrophobic surface area for the outside of a sheet, so that's something we might want to uh, be careful of, where this protein could potentially misfold or start sticking to other things in the cell. Our third design this month comes from Ickfildiza Naman. This is a very cool structure with two central helices that are packed against opposing beta sheets. So there's a four-stranded beta sheet on one side of the helices, and then there's another four-stranded beta sheet uh, sandwiching these two helices from the other side. This is a, a very cool topology. We don't see it a lot. It does have a lot of residues. This is a bigger protein than we normally see in most of our folded puzzles, but it does look like a solid design. We have lots of orange residues in the protein core that should make for very good folding and tight packing and blue residues on the protein surface, which should make the protein soluble and happy in water. One of the concerns that I would have uh, with this kind of design traditionally is that these two helices in the middle are very, very nonpolar. They're very hydrophobic. We see um, this helix here, for instance, is almost completely hydrophobic except for one, two, three polar residues on the entire helix. This is a little bit worrisome. That's a, a long stretch. If you imagine the sequence of this protein strung out, that is a long stretch of very hydrophobic residues. And if uh, that could cause some issues folding, potentially. This is one of the problems we see in some of our symmetric designs, where Foldit likes a alpha helix that is completely hydrophobic. And that can cause a lot of problems we've seen in the lab. But this does look like a reasonable protein design to me. Um, I would be pretty comfortable testing this in the lab, especially with the high confidence value that AlphaFold gives it. And our last design this month also comes from Ickfildiza Naman. Uh, this is a very cool design with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight alpha helices wound up in a solenoid. So this is a lot more helices than we tend to see in our smaller design puzzles. And we also like that these helices are not all parallel. This is not a, a typical helical bundle that uh, has long helices that are parallel to one another. The different orientations of these helices um, give this protein some nice properties that protein engineers like. If you were to try and fuse this protein to another protein that had an alpha helix in it, you could imagine fusing it to any one of these helices and getting a different angle that comes off the end of this design here. These non-parallel, or in this case, solenoid helical proteins can be very useful for downstream protein design projects. Again, this protein has a very solid core full of hydrophobic residues that are tightly packed and lots of blue polar residues on the surface. So this protein should remain soluble. We also wonder this, this uh, repeating pattern that we see in this protein, if we gave some more residues to 
ichthyl dizanamin, maybe they would have been able to build this protein out into a long fiber of a, a continuing solenoid. We very much enjoy seeing creative folds like this. Um, now that we have these very predictive values from alpha fold, we can start to explore some new protein fold space, we think. So we very much encourage you to continue on designing very cool structures that you haven't seen before or that we haven't been able to test in the lab previously. That's all we have for this month. As always, thanks for watching and thanks for playing, and we'll see you next time.